So fragile are the claims relating to the benefits of EVs that they can apparently be shattered in an instant by just one article written by Mr Bean actor Rowan Atkinson. That's the latest nonsense coming out of the UK, where they are now saying that the uptake of EVs is being thwarted by misinformation. Always the argument of last resort when you're losing. Remember the voice referendum. This argument suggests that the public are so ignorant and so easily swayed that they'll believe anything put in front of them. And that's the only reason that the glorious transition to electrification is failing. But as always, the public is much smarter than that. They can see with their own eyes the obvious problems with EVs and, very wisely, they want none of it. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell and drop a comment down below. The UK Telegraph is absolutely on fire at the moment in the EV space and this article is no exception. Link in the description. The great electric car lie is a monstrous deception against the British public. It's laughable for eco-zealots to blame Rowan Atkinson for low take-up. It's just not rational for most to buy one. The great electric car revolution is stalling and the net zero panjandrums are desperate to find somebody to blame. It must be the fault of fake news, they intimate, or disinformation campaigns, or of nitpicking journalists and their gullible readers, or because Elon Musk has embraced right-wing ideas. What other possible reasons could there be for consumers refusing to do their duty? Electric vehicles' EV's share of the UK market has remained stuck at 16% for two years, and 10 out of 11 private buyers are still opting for combustion engines. But instead of seeking to understand the real reasons why even the environmentally conscious continue to patronise petrol-powered cars, green activists are resorting to deranged conspiracy theories. Some, speaking to a House of Lords committee, even singled out a nuanced article by Rowan Atkinson for having harmed their cause. The actor disclosed that he felt duped by electric vehicles and questioned the claims made by advocates. There is nothing zealots loathe more than an apostate. I wish it were true that a single opinion article could alter the purchasing decisions of millions, but the reality is more prosaic. Consumers are rational, and they aren't buying electric cars because it doesn't yet make sense. EVs are prohibitively expensive, their range too short, and there aren't enough charging points. Newspaper reports and personal finance desks have done the public a great service by pointing all this out in great detail. The blunt truth is that EVs, for now, remain a niche product aimed at affluent consumers with narrow requirements and are not yet ready for mass adoption. To claim otherwise is a monstrous deception, an attempt at hoodwinking and impoverishing many middle-class motorists. The original article by Atkinson was published back in June of 2023 in the left-wing, global-boiling, EV-loving, fossil-fuel-hating guardian of all places. You can imagine all the EV soy boys in their kitchens choking on their organic muesli when they read that over breakfast. It's a great article and well worth reading again, and, as a true petrol head who once owned a McLaren F1, Atkinson reflects the views of many of us when he discusses EVs, concluding the article thus. Increasingly, I'm feeling that our honeymoon with electric cars is coming to an end, and that's no bad thing. We're realising that a wider range of options need to be explored if we're going to properly address the very serious environmental problems that our use of the motor car has created. We should keep developing hydrogen as well as synthetic fuels to save the scrapping of older cars which still have so much to give while simultaneously promoting a quite different business model for the car industry in which we keep our new vehicles for longer, acknowledging their amazing but overlooked longevity. Friends with an environmental conscience often ask me, as a car person, whether they should buy an electric car. I tend to say that if their car is an old diesel and they do a lot of city centre motoring, they should consider a change. But otherwise, hold fire for now. Electric propulsion will be of real global environmental benefit one day, but that day has yet to dawn. Personally, I don't think hydrogen is the answer. The infrastructure required for its storage is ridiculously complex and expensive, but I do have high hopes for synthetic fuels, which can be used with existing vehicles and infrastructure, but would reduce net emissions significantly. But it has a long way to go and the ridiculously short time frames that have been imposed on this transition are unlikely to allow it sufficient time to develop, unless we can postpone the inevitable. 
But believing that this one article could possibly derail the multi-billion dollar push for EVs and net zero is nothing short of ludicrous. And in reality, it's the lies peddled by governments about the ease and simplicity of this transition, which are far worse. This story just exposes the desperation of politicians when they realise that people just aren't as dumb as they thought or hoped they were.